you have been waiting a long time for this video, so today I'm going to show you guys how to play Zoroark with the Paint Attack build. There's a lot of things I want to teach you, but the main things I want to teach you in this video are how to use your Faint Attack to catch enemies, how to understand what is a power spike, how to rotate, why to invade, but also how to play against an Umbreon when he plays Miluk. Because I think Zoroark is a really good character versus Umbreon Miluk, since he can illusion the Miluk or fully the Miluk. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play against an Umbreon as a Zoroark and teach you the fundamentals of how to play Zoroark in solo queue. Before we start the video, I'm going to show you guys in practice tool how to practice against Umbreon Miluk, but also how to use your fate attack properly and what it means to have a power spike on Zoroark. In these clips, you can see how I illusion the Umbreon's Miluk or fully the Miluk, doing a combo or not doing a combo. What I always try to do when I play against an Umbreon is I'm trying to bait his Miluk by either face checking him trying to force him to use his Miluk on me, but I always want to try to use the Illusion before I use the Fulier, because sometimes you need Fulier for Gravity, Clefable, etc. When you start playing Zoroark and you want to learn how to play Zoroark, you should always go to Practice Tour, and especially when you go to uh, play against an Umbreon Miluk and you want to know how to counter it, you always want to try to select Zoroark, then on the enemy side you want to select the Umbreon, and then you just start the game, right? Get your level 5, get your Illusion, and then just try to practice against the Umbreon and the Miluk. When you go to the practice tool, you always wanna wait for Umbreon to get the Miluk. Once the Miluk is there, you can uh, like practice your combo. Otherwise, you just reset the level, really cool function, and then you just wanna wait. So the main thing when you play against a Miluk Umbreon is you wanna hear the sound and the visuals. So when the eye closes and you hear the sound, you wanna use your, uh, your illusion. Right now, I use it a bit too late, so it's always about timing. So yeah. This is how you practice Illusion with the Miluk. Always looking for the sound. And if you press it too early, you're not gonna get it, right? Always try to listen to the sound, but also look at the visuals to see how to use the Miluk. Always looking for the Miluk in the sound. And it just comes with practice where like, you need to warm up to see if you can do it or not. When I was coaching a Zoroark player on Metafy, he wanted to know why Zoroark is the way he is and uh, how can she practice the Zoroark? So what I told her is, when you start Zoroark as a beginner, you should practice going with this composition, like with this combo. Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack. It's the simplest combo in Unite with Zoroark, and you cannot really miss it if you are level 13. But with level 13, we are going to talk about this later. So Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Shadow Claw, and then Faint Attack. For example, when you play against the Umbreon, what you want to do is you want to use Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, you wanna wait a bit, Shadow Claw Faint Attack, look for the mean look and then illusion it. But again, if you do it wrong, if you don't uh, time it correctly, you're not going to get a, the mean look out. So always just keep practicing it until you get it, and then you can like execute the uh, Umbreon with the Faint Attack. So how to practice the Shadow Claw Faint Attack? You can practice it on com like on creeps. You can practice it anywhere basically, right? Shadow Claw Faint Attack, Shadow Claw Faint Attack, Shadow Claw Faint Attack. And what you need to keep in mind is when you use the Shadow Claw, you wanna reposition yourself. So Shadow Claw Faint Attack. Shadow Claw Faint Attack, Shadow Claw Faint Attack. You wanna know if the Shadow Claw tip is on the enemy. If not, then you need to reposition yourself a little bit to adjust uh, to have the CC on the Shadow Claw when you activate it. Because this is really important. And once you're level 13, you get a cooldown reduction on the Shadow Claw. That means that you can hammer CC the enemy without him having like any like movement. If he doesn't have full and for example, he's a squishy Pokemon, like the Sigewai. He's gonna get instantly one-shotted because he cannot move, he cannot uh, do it properly. So, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack. And you need to, like, press it instantly, like, after Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, after Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, after Shadow Claw, Faint Attack. For example, earlier I said the Shadow Claw Plus is a decreased cooldown, but it isn't decreased cooldown. It is 0.6 seconds more CC when you are level 13. So when you read the character or you want to learn the character, you always want to go to UniteDB, the website that I'm using a lot to learn my character. So Zoroark, there's all the stats that you need to learn to learn about Zoroark, about the cooldowns, about the damage, about the scaling. So UniteDB is definitely a website to look out for when you want to learn a character. Enough about the introduction. I hope this introduction is going to help you to like learn the basics of Zoroark, specifically for the Illusion Mean Look and uh, Faint Attack combo, because this is really important for me when I teach people how to play Zoroark from the beginning. I'm not going in depth with how to play Zoroark mechanically like a god because this is not going to help you to improve with Zoroark. So this video is for 
people that want to learn Zoroark and want to learn how I play Zoroark from my perspective. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to tell you guys what items I'm going to play, what emblems, and then we're going to look at a game where I played with Comfy and Zoroark and I played this game extremely well and I'm going to talk about this during the game. For the items I was running attack rate, focus ban and weakness policy. Attack rate and weakness policy just gives you a lot of damage for Zoroark. Attack rate is a really good item for Zoroark because he's a speed star that is as an early pressure and he has a really good scaling with the attack rate. So you always want to look out for early attack rate stacks. The focus band can be changed with Lodestone or Razor Claw. Razor Claw having more damage with the Apress during the defense attack combos. But we're going to focus on playing focus band because focus band is for sustainability and it helps for team fights and to stay alive. For the emblems, we have a combination of 6 white and 6 brown with the focus on HP, attack, speed, and a little bit of crit to get some lucky crits. I think overall, when you are a competitive player and you play with emblems, you should stop doing that because when you play competitively, at least for me, I don't want to play with emblems because it will ruin my um, secure, damage, blasted potential, etc. But if you are a casual player who likes to play with emblems, I think this emblem bait is pretty good. Zodorak is a player that doesn't need emblems in general because he's really oppressive and really strong. But I think with a little bit of HP, damage and crit, it's a really solid build. I would be happy if you liked the video and subscribe. I put a lot of effort into this video. We're going to jump into the gameplay now and now I'm going to explain you guys my thought process during the game. So hopefully you guys get some good tips and learn how to play Zoroark. Now I'm going to explain you guys how to play Zoroark in the central area. So when I play Zoroark in the central area, I usually start going with the blue buff, then with the red buff, when I have a comfy. In this game, we are playing with a comfy. But you always want to use double party swipe into slash when you did, like when you do the ball toys, etc. It does it really fast and when you play Zoroark in the central area, it's always easy to take the central area because specifically Zoroark in the early game is really good in our setting. So I'm always going to look forward to get the double fairy swipes into the slash. When you play Razor Claw, you can time it a bit delayed and take the jungle faster. But in this game, we are playing focus band with weakness policy and attack weight. And when I play Zoroark, what, I was, like, what I'm always looking out for when I play it is I the top lane by using the faint attack instantly to be there faster it's only like five to six seconds so before the swablus spawn i always try to activate my faint attack to get into the enemies potentially getting kills potentially threatening them and then getting the kills getting a jackpot or focus pen is enough for me you don't necessarily need to get kills but activating faint attack to bait out enemy abilities or focus pen of a jackpot is really good because the next time the swablus will spawn you have a chance of getting kills. It will like, probably happen here right now. So I engage with the faint attack, disengage again, wait a bit, then use faint attack again, use the travel as a jump pad, and then hit the dragon point, and the decision why. Then trying to run away from the dragon, from the Trevenant, waiting him a bit with the faint attack and the slash. And when you play Zoroark, what you wanna do is, at least for me in the early game, I try to use faint attack slash, faint attack slash, faint attack, instead of using faint attack, faint attack, faint attack. Because you, you optimize your damage and with Slash you can reposition your faint attack again. You always want to try to look for early scores. Once you get your scores, it's just really good for the Zoroark. So, big recommendation when you play Zoroark in the early game is to look for early attack rate stacks. As much as possible, 3 is enough and then you can look for invades. Specifically when you play against like a 3P or like a Dragapult, that is like a weak side jungler. Uh, you want to look out for invades, especially when you play with Comfy. Looking for what the Drippy is doing and then just executing him. Again, faint attack, shadow claw, faint attack, shadow claw, faint attack. And then you just take the advantage, being level 7, having 3 stacks, and now just taking the jungle and allowing the dragon point to get um, level 9. It's really important. For example, here, you can use the... Uh, like, you can finish your combo with faint attack. I will show you again. Finish the combo with faint attack and shadow claw. You have your faint attack ready. To faint attack the uh, the Sidgeway and get into him. This is uh, like a common strategy you can use when you play Zoroark. But when the middle Swablus will spawn at 8 minutes, you always want to look out for the middle Swablus because it's just 3 kids, right? The Trevenant looking for the middle Swablus, faint attack, shadow claw, faint attack, shadow claw, faint attack, and getting the Trevenant and now executing the Dragon Pulse spell, knowing that he doesn't have any abilities and just playing around your cooldowns, right? Now the Ambion is coming and here's the main part from this video. When the Ambion uses Illusion, you can hear a sound, and then you can illusion the sound or the visuals with your 
we look the fear illusion and then dodge the um we look and fade attack combo um the umbreon and then just killing him so now we're going to uh go bot lane trying to score get your attack with stacks again but this time around i'm not going to score because if you score instantly it's gonna be bad you always gonna try to bait the enemies to this fabulous and potentially get kills so taking the albinos taking the solvers is easier and i'm just using illusion again to dodge the minog get the serena jump onto the trevenant i mean like onto the decidui and like use the decidui as a jump pad using the full year to dodge the mean look and then just trying to kill the ambion there's like you don't really need to kill the ambion here because it's level 5 and you're level 9 but just like limit testing a bit illusioning the mean look again and just trying to kill him you are wasting a lot of time here but if you want to practice you can also just practice it right so now looking for the enemy jungle looking to see if the enemy jungle is taken knowing that we can potentially play bot lane but we want to add pressure to the dragon point seeing what he does seeing three people on top lane and now rotating towards top lane you always want to try to rotate towards the map from the enemy jungle especially when you play with comfy you can play more aggressive than usual and then when the umbrella is there you can face check him and then illusion the mean look always comes down with practice and then executing the umbreon again i'm looking for uh faint attack shadow claw faint attack shadow claw combos and after i finish my faint attack shadow claw combo you can activate your ultimate because the last faint attack will reposition yourself into the enemies so you can get a big ultimate uh, usage out of it so now going into the situation with the empowered faint attack and just jumping on them always trying to like take the bolters from the jungle and when you have comfy again you can just try to score now looking for a kill a bit this is like limit testing you can limit test with faint with work, but you don't need to limit test so you can like use your faint attack back faint attack faint attack it's like a juke and then you can potentially kill someone and then run away always limit test illusion the spirit checker and then just going out to the situation killing him and the dragon point and just limit testing you can limit test but i would recommend you to not limit this as much only if you play with a comfy you can try that but you give a lot of xp when you do it so i was using the shadow claw faint attack shadow claw faint attack shadow claw again faint attack this is how i play zuruak you always want to try to look out for an invade looking to see if you can invade the enemy if you can't invade the enemy look for early stacks i mean like four stacks now the fifth stack is really important to have attack rate stacks with Zuruak. Looking for the blue buff again, using the blue buff as a jump pad. Sadly, like for example, Gudra took the um, blue buff, but you take the Boltoy now. Using it as a jump pad, delaying your um, Shadow Claw to get the faint attack reset. And then you just look out for the enemies again, looking to the enemy jungle again, just scouting the enemy jungle, seeing if there's potential farm. Your main goal when you play Zoroark is to get level 13. Once you're level 13, it'll expand you earlier your shadow claws are going to hit instantly so i think in this moment i was looking a bit too aggressive trying to like juke everything with the illusion but you need to keep in mind sabrina's ultimate like has a lock on target right she's gonna one shot you and then you have a 40 second cooldown so like this is uh something that you need to keep in mind when you play zoroark and you win the early game you're gonna give massive amount of xp towards the enemies the sabrina is almost level 12 and you have a high cooldown specifically when you play in the late game Going to be really bad for you so always keep that in mind when you play zoroark especially when you play with a comfy because when you play with a comfy it just means two people will die and then you can potentially lose the game right so always look forward for this and just uh be mindful about how you play zoroark looking for the level 13 before going to the objective is important but you can also try to get the kill instead of looking for the 13 but level 13 is such a use power spike with zoroark it's insane Especially when you play like with Vegas Steer, it's really good. So yeah, getting the Vegas Steer with the Faint Attack the um, Shadow Claw, you can always practice it, Faint Attack Shadow Claw. And the more you practice it, the better you get it. And if you want to improve on like Faint Attack Shadow Claw, there's like different variations how you can use it. But in this game, we are focusing on using the Shadow Claw and the Faint Attack as a simple combo to execute the enemies. You don't really need to go insane with it, right? You camp in the bush, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Shadow Claw, Faint Attack, Illusion, the Minook, and then Faint Attacking the Dragapult. Isn't it insane like how fun it is to play Zoroark against an Ambion if you practice the Illusion and just beating the Illusion out and then executing the enemies? Because the enemies feel safe when they play with the Ambion, but always practicing the Illusion, Illusioning three times in a row, I mean, like two times in a row, the Minook is just really fun. But you always want to look out for uh, using the illusion before using full year because if you have full year for example you can full year the serena ultimate right so again 
So we know still, zero claw faint attack, zero claw faint attack, zero claw, and other faint attack. And then we just look for the enemy jungle again, see if the enemy jungler take, took his jungle or not. Maybe he didn't take it, they have two attackers, so always using um, you know, a little bit. Because I was playing with Comfy and Zoroark, using this ultimate at this minute of the time is just Ego Ultimate. Meaning, Ego Ultimate is not really good when you play Zoroark, because you don't have your ultimate for the late game fight, but you use it because you are so ahead. So keep in mind to not use ultimate on Zoroark at that time. When it's a few minutes to 2 minutes and 50 seconds, you can look for a last minute ultimate, because Zoroark is a Pokemon that can efficiently farm his ultimate back, and you can potentially get level 13 or 14 from getting the kills. So 215 is the last time you can use ultimate on Zoroark um, to get to farm your ultimate back in time. So not using ultimate at that time is really, really bad right now. Just looking for ego plays, and looking to get enemies on the tree. It's not necessary. Again, I had a 30 second cooldown when I died, so you need to keep in mind to play it a bit slow. Looking for the level 50 now. Basically, when you're level 50 with Zoroark, the game is just over in solo queue, because it's just really strong. But I always want to try to do is, I want to try to score um, with Zoroark with Comfy, because it's just really efficient when um, Comfy is on you, because the score animation is really fast, but obviously, when the Rayquaza spawns, always being in position for the Rayquaza is important. So I'm going to look out for kills now, Shadow Claw Faint Attack, Shadow Claw Faint Attack, and then you just want to wait for the enemies to come to you. How you want to play late game is playing around bushes and playing around vision. I like to take the, like, the top right position, but in this game specifically, I was just killing the enemies and not really respecting them as much. So I always want to look out uh, to get all of vision from the enemies and see what the enemies are doing. And then uh, look potentially for a kill. Drag about face checking the uh, faint attacks of Rook, level 15. It's not good. It's going to get one shot, right? The Shadow Claw, faint attack, Shadow Claw, faint attack, Shadow Claw, and then faint attack. I guess my fully was still up. So after I activated my Folie, the Serena got countered ultimated and she couldn't use her ultimate on me because of the Folie. So you always want to look out for when you do the combo to also use Folie and Illusion at the same time. The teammates are ripping the objective, I gave them space to rip it and we get the objective and we win the game. So in this game I was showing you guys a bit of how to play with the Zoroark and the Comfy, how to add pressure, but in the future videos I'm going to show you guys how to play Zoroark from behind, how to play Zoroark from a stomping like position, but yeah, I'm just trying to explain you the basics why I invade, why I try to look for level 13, and how to play Zoroark, what it means to not limit test. Like, I had a 30 second coda when I died, right? So, you yeah, always want to look out for not limit testing too much, but trying to limit test to learn your character is also important. So keep in mind the timers, last time ultimate is 250, and when you use faint attack, shadow claw, you want to jump into the enemy by using the blue buff the defender, the attackers, as a jump pad to kill the enemies. Okay yeah, guys, this is how you play Zoroark. This game was with a comfy, but you can also do it without a comfy. So it's always up to how you want to play the Zoroark. 27 kills and 6 assists is insane. Also the 169k damage, which is like just so broken with Zoroark. And yeah guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the Zoroark video. I'm going to upload future Zoroark videos in the future. Although it's going to say goodbye. And thanks for watching and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.